In this video, you'll learn how to make objects and shapes move smoothly in Premiere Pro by using keyframes to animate them. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is import your objects. I will leave a link where you can download and follow along if you would like as well. So once you have your objects in Premiere Pro, you'll see they show up in your project panel and you can just drag one of these out onto your timeline. Now for reference, I am using a 4K sequence. So that is 3840 by 2160. If you don't know how to make a sequence, you can come down to this bottom left hand side, create a new item and then do sequence. And you can just use this UHD setting at the top here and then click OK. Cool, so now you have a sequence with your object on the timeline here. And what we wanna do is make this object move smoothly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is come over to our effects panel. If you don't see this, you can come up to window and open the effects panel here. Another way you can get to this panel is by using the shortcut Shift 7. And what we're gonna do is just search for the transform effect. Now we can drag it up into our effect controls panel or onto our clip on the timeline here. And so once you do that, you see it show up in the effect controls panel with some settings. Now, before going any further, I'm just going to adjust our motion setting here to, let's say 50 to make our circle a lot smaller. Actually, I'm gonna do 40. So the first thing I'm gonna have done here is transitioning the object from being out of the scene down here to in the scene in the center where it is right now. And we can do this by using keyframes. So we're gonna come over to the transform panel here. I'm going to select the position keyframe and toggle the animation right here. And then I'm going to come to the timeline and drag my playhead over to almost to the end. And I'm going to set another keyframe by selecting add slash remove keyframe. Great. So now we have two keyframes here, but nothing is happening yet. So what we need to do is set the first keyframe so that the object is out of the frame. So what we can do here is come over to the position, go to the vertical value here and drag this to the right so that it's out of frame. And now if we play this back, you can see the object comes into the frame very slowly. I'm actually going to speed this up by dragging the keyframe over to the left here. And if we play this back, now the transition's a little bit faster. But this isn't a very smooth transition. I mean, it's all one speed. It starts and then it abruptly stops here. So what we can do to make the transition a little smoother is we can select our keyframes here, right click on them, and then go Temporal Interpolation, Ease In, Temporal Interpolation, Ease Out. And just so you can see what that is actually doing, I'm going to toggle open the position here and we will undo those and come back to the start. I'm gonna zoom in. And as you can see, this is before adding our ease in and ease out. Now, once we add the ease in, you see it goes from a flat line to a little bit of a curve, which means the transition of the animation is going a little bit smoother and the ease out just evens it out on both sides. So if we play this back, you can see that the transition is a little bit smoother. It's not quite where we want it yet. And that is because the ends and the start of it are just too abrupt because it starts a little bit slower, gets really fast here, and then slows down again. But like I said, it's just very abrupt. So what we can do to make this a lot smoother is we can drag these keyframe handles to the left or select this keyframe handle and drag it to the right. And what this will do is make the transition really slow at the start, get really fast, and then it slow down again. So if we play this back, you can see it's a little bit too fast and a little bit too abrupt in the middle there. So I'm gonna select the keyframes and just drag them to the sides a little bit so it smooths it out. And now we have a really smooth transition here where it starts slow, gets faster, and then slows down again. Now I can also do this so that it starts really fast. So if I drag this over, and then I'm gonna drag this up so it's faster Then play this back. You can see that our transition starts really fast and then slows down as it gets closer to the center of the screen. And we can even drag this out a little bit more and drag this over if we want to emphasize that effect. And so now we have a really smooth entrance for our circle, which is sweet. But to make it a little more realistic, because when we're seeing things move with our eyes in real life, we see a little bit of blur on the object. It's just how our eyes work. So we can emulate that by coming down to the shutter angle over here and dragging that up to 360. And now, as you can see, if I go keyframe by keyframe, there's a little bit of a blur on the edges. So if I go back to zero, there's no blur. 360, there's blur. 
And now if we play this back, you can see it's a lot more natural looking. Great, so that is how you use the transform effect with the position keyframing. Now let's get on to the scale and rotation. So to show this, I'm going to drag this image onto our clip here. It's just a dotted circle ring basically, and I'm gonna shrink it down so that it's just a little bit bigger than the size of our circle here. And then again, I'm gonna use shift seven to come over to our effect controls and then drag the transform effect. And what I wanna do with this ring is as the circle approaches the center here, I want the ring to expand. So expand from the center and then start to rotate. So on our timeline here, I'm gonna to come to the place where I want this animation to start. I think it's gonna be right about here when our circle enters the bottom of the dotted ring here. And what I'm gonna do is set a keyframe on scale, toggle animation, and a keyframe on rotation. Then I'm gonna to come to the end where I want the animation to stop, and I'm gonna set a keyframe by clicking add keyframe. Then I'll come back to the first keyframe by clicking go to previous keyframe, this little arrow here, and I'm going to reduce the scale to zero. Additionally, I'm going to change the rotation to negative 360, and if we play this back, you can see again, it's just a boring linear scale. And I also want the ring to be behind the circle so that you don't see it when it's smaller. So I'll drag the ball object above the dotted circle. And if we play that back, now it just pops up from the back. And I'm gonna come back to the dotted circle and drag these keyframes out a little bit as well. Then we'll come back to the first keyframe here. And now we need to do something similar to the first one where we select all of our keyframes, right click, ease in, and just so you can see how it affects the keyframes here, I'm gonna to toggle down scale and rotation and then ease out. And so now we have these smooth keyframes like before. But unlike position, scale and rotation don't really act the same with their keyframes. For example, if I drag this keyframe handle over to the left, it can go down or up. Whereas the position keyframe can only go up, left, or right. So now we have this new element that we have to worry about where the handle might go down or up. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, expand our panel here, drag this over so we can see a little more. And I'm going to try and make this animation a little smoother. So I'm gonna drag the handle over, trying to keep it as flat as possible. But as you can see, sometimes it'll go down a little bit, sometimes it'll go up. Just try to keep it very, very flat and in line. And once you think you have that, then you should be good. And I'm gonna do something similar here with the scale, dragging this over like so. And if we play this back, now we have a cool little scale up. And I'm gonna do the same with the rotation here. Just drag this over, try and keep it flat, and do this as well, raise it up. And if we play this back, now we have a super clean scale and rotation animation. So this is really cool already. But another thing that we can do to add an extra layer to everything we're doing is stacking the transform effects. So let me show you what I mean here. So I'm going to drag our yellow ball here below the two layers, and I'm gonna shrink this to about this size. And then again, Shift-7, drag our transform effect onto this clip. I'm going to drag the shutter angle to 360 so we have that motion blur. And then I'm going to drag my playhead over to where the purple ball covers the yellow one, and I'm gonna set a scale and a rotation keyframe. Come back to the start of the clip, and I will set the rotation. And as you can see, when I'm changing the rotation value, the circle's having a little bit of a buggy issue here in Premiere. So I'm going to copy the transform effect and then delete it and do a little trick here where you nest your clip, right click, click nest, and then Command V to paste your transform back. And now when you rotate it, the bug should be fixed. I'm also going to drop the scale down to zero here and then select all of the keyframes here. And like before, we could right click, do ease in and ease out, but there's a shortcut where in one click you can do that process. So if you're doing this a lot, it'll save you a ton of time. So instead of right clicking, going ease in, right clicking, going ease out, instead of doing all that, you just do bang and it's all fixed. So let me show you how you can do that before we move on. You can come up to Premiere Pro, go to keyboard shortcuts, and then search for temporal interpolation, and then find your ease in and ease out. If you can't read these, then you just need to drag the shortcut over to the right here, 
and then change your keys for ease in and ease out. Now for me, I have it as one and two. It doesn't matter what your keys are as long as they're right next to each other so you can hit them at the same time. And that applies the ease in and ease out effect to your keyframes here. Cool, so now I'm going to do something similar to before, drag it over, keeping it flat as possible, and do the same with the rotation here. Then we play this back, and actually it looks kind of stupid to me. So I'm just gonna have the yellow ball appear above the purple here. I'm gonna drag it over a little bit as well. So if we play this back, you can see we have a little glitch where for some reason you can see the ball before it scales up. And so you can fix this by changing the scale to 0.1. Again, just another weird bug that Premiere has with their keyframing. So we'll play this back now. And as you can see, we have a smoother animation. Now, as you can see, my computer is struggling a little bit because I have my recording software and my Premiere Pro open at the same time. So you might not have this lag, but I'm having this lag. One thing you can do to sort of fix this is lower the resolution here as you play it back. It's really pixely and it doesn't look great, but everything plays a lot smoother if you do that. So I'm gonna keep it like that for now. And like I said, we're going to stack keyframes here. So what I'm gonna do is on this yellow ball, I'm going to add another transform effect. So I'll search for the transform and I'm gonna add one below here, raise the shutter angle to 360. And what I want to happen at this point when pretty much every other animation stops, I want the yellow circle to fade out. So what I'm gonna do is set a keyframe toggle animation on the opacity then drag out a little bit, and then set the opacity to zero. Then I'll select our two keyframes and use the shortcut that we just made. And if we play this back, now the circle fades out. And I'm gonna make this a smoother animation again by doing this, and we have it fading out. And we can even stack another animation here. So while it's fading out, let's say I want it to zoom up and out of frame right here. So I'm going to set a position keyframe and I'm going to drag our playhead over and drag the circle so that it's out of frame here. And I'll select our keyframes, use the shortcut, and I'll toggle open position using this little arrow. And I'm gonna drag the handle from this left keyframe here over to the edge, and I'm gonna drag the right one out. So we just have a really slow and then super fast move out. So if we play this back, now you can see the circle slowly moves and then quickly zooms out of frame. And that happens at the same time that the opacity does above it. And you can just keep stacking these transform effects. Eventually it might slow down your computer a little bit, but it's really nice to be able to go back in and individually change each of these things. And if you want things to constantly be moving on your screen, then it's really necessary that you have these different effects layered on top of each other and going at the same time. I'm going to delete the yellow circle because it's slowing down my machine and show you another example of stacking the transform effect that I think is really useful to see. So if I drag another transform onto our ball object here and then drag the shutter angle to 360, then I'm gonna drag the playhead over a little bit. And as you can see, we already have a position keyframe transform effect up here. I'm gonna actually add another one down below here and I'm going to drag this out and set another keyframe at the end. And what I want to do with this is move the circle over to the right. And then I will select both keyframes, use our shortcut, toggle open position, and drag this over. And what this will do is it will have both position transform effects going at the same time. And I'm actually going to drag this over to the left a little bit more. And let's play this back. And now, as you can see, it goes up. But before it finishes getting all the way to the center on that first transform effect, which we had up above, it actually already starts to do the other one where it goes off to the right hand side. And so this is how you can blend different animations together to get that really smooth look and feel. So I'll play it back one more time just so you can see it. And that is what we have. Now finally, let's learn how you can reuse these smooth keyframe animations by making presets in Premiere Pro. And this will allow you to drag a preset onto a clip apply it and in one drag and drop you have the same exact animation so you don't have to redo it again every single time. So let's say you've made this really cool animation where you have your ball zooming up and then going right and then going left like it doesn't know where to go and you want to save that so that you can reuse it in your future videos. Well let's click on the ball with those animations going on 
And then you can see these are the four transform effects that we used to create this animation. And all we have to do is select one of the transform effects, then click Command or Control on Windows and select all of the transform effects here, right click and then do Save Preset. And we will call it Up, In, Right, Left. And because we want this to be a transition in where the object starts out of frame, then pops up and goes right and left, we are going to set the type to Anchor to Endpoint. And this will make it so that the animation starts right at the beginning of the clip. We will hit OK. And then just so you can see that it actually works, we'll drag this over. I'm going to delete all of these transform effects on this clip. So it's just our ball again. And I'm going to come over to Presets. And then I'm going to drag the up, in, right, left preset onto our clip. And if we play it back, you have the same exact animation. Now that you've learned how to use keyframes to animate smooth moving objects, you might wanna check out this video here where I show you how to automatically create animated subtitles in Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching.